situation room professor peter kagwanja is our guest and he's here with us in the studio prof the opposition is doing its thing mm. and you say you have no problem with what raila odinga is saying yeah are you also okay with what raila odinga is proposing to do in terms of the public meetings he says i want to have public meetings just have a conversation with the people be visible be present with the people and let's talk about this government and what it's not doing mm-hmm. there's an issue of ibc and all these other issues is that there right do you agree with this approach well i i i i don't disagree with the idea of organizing uh, your opposition and as i said the government itself will have the mandate to organize development focus develop councils and and so on even platforms like you know the hasra fund you you organize an online platform to deliver uh, the same i i would have a problem uh, with in, uh, with anything whether it's in africa or in the us and this is a problem the the americans are having with the donald trump uh, <laughs> that uh, he has he's the leader of opposition but the some of the things that he's coming up with the proposals about raising his profile mm-hmm. as a politician undermine the foundation of the american society when you talk about terminating the constitution what are you talking about uh, you know we got we go back to pennsylvania uh, or what you what are you suggesting people do mm-hmm. now so democracy has its limit and the limit is very simple now you have endless rights within a democracy mm-hmm. that's the principle but you are freedom end where my rights begin right therefore the moment you begin to do things that undermine other people's rights then you are not within the democratic space what does that mean it means for example if you call for protests that's right call for protest it's mm. that's within our democratic purview mm. but ensure one nobody hurts mm. that two no property is destroyed that two three nobody's right to go to work and to do what they need to do is stopped the moment you the moment you uh, my my brother muga decide that i'm not coming to work today because i'm not sure from my house to my workplace i am safe mm. then you have basically interfered with the democracy it's a simple as that it's not as complicated therefore protest is enshrined in our constitution nobody will tell you now that you cannot protest um who should protest i i think the, re- the leader should be the last to use that uh, that instrument mm. because you must always know as a leader when do you use the protest protest is the nuclear equivalent in the warfare mm because it means that you went to parliament you could not get your rights mm. you went to the courts you couldn't mm. get your rights you went to all the lobbies that are available including uh, civil society mm. uh, that could not be achieved mm. then what 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 else do you need and that's where we reached when we we, we poured into the streets against the government of Daniel Moy because you say this you are put in you say this you are in committee you do this in parliament everybody you are producing court at 5 i mean 4 459 you know for, for uh, when the court has only one minute to mm. go i mean then you have no fr- on a friday on a friday <laughs> now so then you had no option so we poured into the street and did that it was nuclear it was because we had gotten to the nuclear option of our war mm. now after we gained our uh, freedom in t- in 202 we started w- pedaling back into normal t- normal life and by now we should be settling to normal life yeah. uh settling to the normal life that i was in opposition i was in the go- in the government side as a mio side mm. and we lost squarely when to not because we had the the deep state we had everything <laughs> and we had the money we had the money mm. let's be clear about it if we didn't have it in the government mm. we had we had it in private mm. if we are buying a one plate uh, you know uh, one million per plate in order to fundraise for uh, getting out the vote mm. then we we are doing well <laughs> but the, the democracy being what it is we lost so now we got back to the drawing board and uh, and asked the fundamental question 
how do we systematically go to challenge this government uh, without the without going to you know without going to the ways without that unleashing are unleashing uh, the nuclear yeah unleashing the nuclear so my for a politician but for an ordinary person let's let's make, make this distinction very clear for an ordinary person who feels aggrieved by democracy has talked to their, their representatives members of parliaments mcas and they're not giving them answers uh they they have talked to everybody they can talk to including the church and something is not working then demonstrations and protests become a right option. at that time it's not the nuclear option because for the ordinary people revolution is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a nuclear yes for, for ordinary people and they are the ones who choose their leaders that's why you find revolutionaries are not one of your what you can call very educated people mm -hmm. the kimadis were not professor professors uh you know and so on so forth because it is coming from the people it is spontaneous it's from below but for a politician protest is the nuclear option because you are now calling the people you're inciting your people your followers to come out and do the inevitable is this is this the time for protest in kenya not yet we've not even hit hit 100 days is this the time for demonstrations in the streets not yet we have not even concretized the agenda that's going to pour out into the street. So it's not, it's not necessary, mm -hmm. if you wish. Mm -hmm. How do we know that it's time to protest? When you have, you have exhausted the avenues available and the response is uh, draconian. That that's and and the test and and everybody feels it. Mm. Uh, in Mount Kenya, when Rubia and Matiba came out and these are the wealthiest among our among us the that region's people then we knew that the end has come there is no turning back mm. uh, very many people had protested that godo karaoke merugi whatever nganga mukaru nganga many people had protested for over a decade but when, when matiba went. and rubia came out then they said that uh, the end has come the, the direction in which one would hope that a nation was going is that you're graduating from a place of infanthood and then you're actually going towards adolescence and then adulthood in the race towards development. That's the hope, mm. that that's where the progression is. Do you think that these agitations that we see along the way are contributing towards this governance concept that we're talking about? That you're in a constant state of politicking to hope that you will get to a desired end. That we politic in the manner in which we do so that many things will come about. One of the things, for example, is electoral reforms. Mm. One would hope that truly if we were really interested in making sure that electoral reforms take place in this country, those are the things that we would target. Then if we talk about the development, the health, the education of our children, uh, the health of our people, um, mitigating factors, the drought, for example, that some of us seem to have forgotten is still ongoing in this country. As we look at these factors and the agitations that we see politically, would one not hope that it's kind of like a ball that's rolling, but it's also turning on its axis. But mm. either way, we are making some kind of headway towards an, a, a desired goal. Is that all right? What mm. we see, is it okay? Can we still do that? Or do we say, stop it, put all the philosoph philosophical agenda aside and let's just get down and do the work. Mm. Because then one would say that the way in which we see things happening today, that the opposition operates in the manner it does because we're still chewing on sour grapes mm. and is not really vested mm. in the proper governance and development of this country. Is it all right, the agitations that we see? Is it taking us somewhere? Mm. There are two questions that we ask in life. <coughs> The first question is what? Mm. And the second question is how? The question what is about the end, what we want to achieve. Mm. And I think that's what you're speaking to. Mm. And the next question is how do we reach there? And that's what we are now debating here. Mm. Uh, because we all know what we want in Kenya. One, we want Kenyans to be free. We don't want to go back to some of the conditions we found ourselves <coughs> in. Because in freedom, I, I, I can actualize and realize my own my, my, my dreams. But at the same time, we want a government 
that is working. A government that delivers on areas of health, education for our children, and also provides the amenities that we need to, to live day, day by day, mm. water, electricity, and so on. So, so we know the ends. And the old men of the 1960s were cleverer than we were. They, they did not go to complicated de kind of de debate that I, I would bring onto this platform about dialectics and all. They talked about one thing called mm. poverty, ignorance, and disease. Mm. These Post are the motto enemies of our people. Mm. They were as simple as that, and very clear <laughs> in their minds. Yep. So, eliminating poverty, ignorance, and disease. Mm. Now, and when you're doing that, when you now begin to debunk the, what you mean by ignorance, then you find technical education lies there, other education lies there, uh, somewhere gubaro for the old ones, mm. and all, so you can debunk it. So we know the ends, so we know what. Mm. What we have disagreed on in this country for, uh, you know, donkey years is how. And we are caught at this question of how because ideologically we come from different uh, perspectives mm. or different directions. There are those of us who come from the revolutionary background. That you think in order to, uh, to achieve something, you must be defined as revolutionary. So mm. here people, colleagues of mine in the intellectual world talking about we the progressives versus the others. <laughs> like, like, like we, you know, we the progressives. Uh, um, progressives, the, the, the problem therefore is not what, it is how. Mm. And this is where we are today. Now, if I was where Raila right Odinga is today, the first thing I would have done is to create my shadow cabinet. <clears throat> the second thing I would ask is, uh, I, would have, I want a conversation with uh, Dr. William Ruto mm. on where my office as the leader of opposition is. Mm. Where is my office? I need that towering place. You have a state house, your deputy has a st another state house, and the, the, the ministers have these offices. Mm. Where are my, my ministers? There's the shadow ministers. Because this, this government provides for shadow cabinet. Then I would be asking, now for my shadow cabinet to do the work it's supposed to do, including the, my secretariat, the people around me, what are they going to depend on? So you are asking for resources to be an effective opposition. Mm. Because that's what our constitution demands. And the an president effective, has said, I want an, an effective Yes. Position. So can you have that? Now, power has P.O. box, post office address. If you don't have a post office address, then you have no power. Mm. And therefore, if you are leader of opposition where people cannot wake up in the morning and find you, then you have no power. That's why you keep on talking about Kamukunji. You keep on talking about Kibera. You keep on talking about, because these are the only post office addresses that people know that are shared. Mm. Uh, give us an opposition that has teeth. And then let's move from there. If this government doesn't deliver or on its agenda, then we are simply taking advantage of that and the public can see. When come 2027, mm. they will vote the way they vote. But then unfortunately, Prof. Yes. Mm. is, yes, it makes a lot of sense to say, you know, organize this way. Ask for this facilitation for the members of your shadow cabinet, for the opposition, blah, 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 blah. But our system doesn't recognize that. Our system sees one parliament that holds the executive to account. And that parliament has minority and majority. And that parliament has provided the office of majority, minority leader the office of deputy minority leader, the office of minority whip, and the others. So there's that. Ruto can basically just tell Raila, ah, go and ask the speaker. No, that, that's, that's understood. Mm. But remember, we, you and I were in this country in 2007 when the national madness overtook us mm. and we were on each other's, you know, uh, neck. I was in Quebec government as an advisor and remember the debates we were having and mm. said, the, the people are making a legitimate case. This, this uh, imperial presidency seems to be having the power to do everything. And therefore, if you drive from Nairobi to Rodua, you find spaces of government and spaces of the opposition on the road. Mm. The ones of the government have no potholes. The ones of opposition have potholes. <laughs> it was very clear, mm. even on the roads. Then we said, Kenyans need to feel they have something. That's how devolution was born. It, is not, it has not reached its optimum because it needs to have resources that make sense and two, that those resources are protected from corruption and other uh, mishandling. Mm -hmm. uh, but essentially, the principle was 
let people have their own spaces and manage their own development. Mm. The government concentrate on policy of on the overall. The war against the three enemies of our people, ignorance, poverty, and disease. That's the government. Now, it is possible to tell William Ruto, and he, he will listen, this I can tell you, he'll listen, that we need an opposition with the teeth. So that if Professor Kagwanja is not consulting for William Ruto, mm. I can sort of consult for Raira Odinga, and Raira Odinga mm. pay me mm. as an expert. Right? Mm. About what, about GMO, about uh, other things affecting our place. Mm. I can review the Hasra Fund mm. on behalf of Raira Odinga and the opposition and be paid and, 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 buy, and put, my, I mean, put food on the table for my children mm. uh, without necessarily feeling like that I'm serving... Using public funds. Yes, without you, uh, I'm misusing public funds. Mm. So by, by, by just going to Kamukunji, let me make it this very, very simple. By just making, going to Kamukunji, which has no pure box in terms of our democracy, you have denied livelihoods to millions of us. Maybe he's using, he's, he's basically going the same route you're taking, but he's gone through a different road. No, but I cannot be employed in Kamukunji. Going to Kamukunji mm. is not one be way of having Kamukunji. a conversation with William Ruto. Yeah. You know what? I need a place. The reason why I'm in Kamukunji is because I don't have a PO box. If you want me but, not to come to Kamukunji, then provide me for me. But that is box. not what is taking him there. You know, first things first. Do you want the girl? How do you know? Uh, do you want the girl? Uh. Or do you want the drama around it? How do you get the girl without the drama? Uh, but, but you, do, I mean, you have to say there has that, uh, this, to be that thing. The, 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 the gates are closed uh, and the women on the other side are singing. Yes. They and sure the can do that. And the connections. <laughs> <laughs> and the <laughs> has to make the door open. Yes. yes. But, but you see, there is somebody among this drama. There's somebody who is quiet somewhere mm -hmm. with his uh, either leather jacket or whatever he chose to go with this time, mm -hmm. who is sitting there and quietly saying. Do it for me because I need that girl. You have to indicate what it is you want at that material time. But there's something now, that brought you there. You know what it is. Yes. You so, already know what it is that has brought you to that gate. You, the people on the other side who are singing know what know. you want. Yes. And, they also, <laughs> and they also know what they want from you. Because yes. you cannot just get a girl for nothing. Yep. Therefore, politics is simply like that. It's not a negotiation. It's a struggle. But you have to make your objectives very clear. For me... The 100 days after the election, I wanted to see a functioning opposition with what I have mentioned, a cadu cabinet. Remember, R Ruto just managed to swear his PSAs yep. the day before yesterday. By now, we should be having the technical people who are going to help the opposition. Mm. The but, but, but Professor, let me ask you, yeah. was, does our constitution allow for what you're suggesting? Yes, it does. We are based on the concept of two governments. Yes, we the are. Government, the gov yes, and we have the majority leader. In, uh, we have the majority yes. leader in parliament. Mm. What we did not do, and this was our mistake when we were making the, the new constitution, we did not provide for the leader of the, party, the presidential candidate who was in the majority to come to parliament. Because like now, Raira should be speaking in parliament about what he wants to, to do or what he wants to be done. Now, that platform is not there. Why? We don't have that P.O. box. So the P.O. box he has is Kamukunji, mm -hmm. uh, Kibera, and Nakuru, uh, Fraha Stadium and other stadiums. So the, the, the point is, let's not lose the fundamental. At this age in our time, as a country, the biggest challenge is that we can go back to the protest politics of the 1990s, or we can stabilize our democracy by institutionalizing it mm. and only coming out of institution <clears throat> if the leadership become draconian. And, it, and you see that. Uh, that is how the Americans uh, did it. Uh, when Trump became too much for them, they used the media was one of, of the spaces. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, the houses were some of the spaces. And in the public, in those who are in, in the intellectual world, journals and other publications and they got rid of trump that way mm. B and and the people came out of the streets the black you know uh, black lives matter yep. uh, that, that campaign itself mm. so there is always a way in which we can protect There's our democracy yeah but uh, the, i put but it to it, you professor the way you've said it i'm actually hearing it yes. probably yeah Raila and karua have mm. tried going to Ruto via the political advisors 
and they have seen this will not work. So they're going to root over their other advisors. I don't, I don't security see. advisors, for example, we look at national security. These demonstrations have an effect on national security. Mm. Probably, Mr. President. But we have that agenda on the table. I'm, I'm looking for it. That's because I, I have been debating with my colleague, Makao Mutua. Mm. We, we were on the same political side. And saying, you, you start by basically bastardizing the system we are trying to build by calling it fake. Right? Mm. Then after you call it fake, you want to now prescribe.